Today with me, I have both the iPad mini 7 and the iPad Pro because I've been using iPad OS 26 on both of these devices. And there's a lot of things that I've found, features that are actually gonna help you on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's exactly what I wanna share with you. But before I share them, all I wanna say is in the description, you'll find all the different chapters to the different features and things I like. So feel free to jump around. But if you want to stick around for the whole thing, let's get the show started. Now, the very first thing that you're going to notice is visually with liquid glass. And this is really going to be something you either like it, you don't like it, or eventually with time, you'll just get used to it. Because honestly, what is the alternative? We don't have one. I still think that it's done in a very nice way. It does look good, but legibility can sometimes be an issue. And I personally said this in my iOS 26 video too, that there should just be a translucency slider. So I can have it more transparent or less transparent depending on what suits my eyes, right? So if that was an option, that would have been really cool. And I think that more people would have been happy with it. But nonetheless, it is done in a beautiful way. Everything from Safari to your different apps, they all have very lo a nice look. And what I personally like is just dark mode. I think dark mode just looks really nice with the liquid glass look. And I previously was actually a big fan of using tinted because I like to keep the colors muted on my screen just for, it really helped me reduce my screen time which by the way is another video I've done. So if you wanna see that, I will link it down below. But nonetheless, liquid glass is a great enhancement and visually it's nice to just have a refreshed look to the entire iOS. The next feature is actually one of my favorites. I would actually say like my, probably my top favorite and which is just the ability to have windows. And yes, this works on even the iPad mini, which is really awesome because they could have easily left this out but they didn't, and that is really, really cool. Now, what I love with the windows is the fact that you have this handle at the bottom right, and it's as simple as just dragging it. That's literally all you have to do, and you can resize it. And then on top of that, if you pull down the menu at the top and you go to window, you have a bunch of options like, okay, put all my windows side by side or put them in quarters and put them left and right and move a window. This just makes like multitasking so easy. I remember I tried like one of the first things on my iPad Pro was like running my favorite game, which is Clash Royale and a web page all at the same time. And I couldn't do that. And it just boggled my mind that on something like an M4 iPad Pro, I couldn't do that, but that, that was reality. And when I got the Pixel 9 Pro Fold back in September of last year, I could do it on that. And I was like, how, how come I can do it on a foldable phone and I can't do it here? So Windows is huge. And if you're somebody that uses multitasking on your iPad, you are going to love this, not only for when you have it in tablet mode, but also if you decide to connect it to an external display, it's really, really helpful. And, you know, when you do decide to connect it to a display and you have a trackpad or a mouse or a keyboard, it, the mouse is going to behave like a mouse. You actually have a pointer. And I know as funny as this sounds, like this, this feels like this is overdue by so long, and it is, but the pointer is so much more precise than just having a big circle for a device like an iPad Pro. So that is also really helpful and it just makes multitasking such a breeze. The next upgrade that really mattered to me is one with the Files app. Not only do you have things like a preview app to actually view PDFs in the right manner, you can also choose certain things to open when you select on a file. So for example, if you want a file to always open in one app, you can do that. But the major key one for me was simply being able to add a folder into my iPad stock. And that is one of the most common things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. When I'm out and about, I often have to create labels for 
different orders that come in in my online store. And when I'm on my Mac, I have that labels folder in my dock. Now I also have it on my iPad. So when I create a label on the iPad, I can simply drop that file into there. And it's just one less step. It's just something simple, very simple, but it's just one less step that you have to do. And in terms of like the files app, you also have like collapsible folders. So instead of just looking at a folder, you can actually collapse it beforehand and see the files inside. So file management has also gotten a lot better overall. But the one thing that really mattered for me was the fact that I could take multiple folders, put them in my iPad stock and easily access those files because I use iCloud, right? So they're always synced. And before I was always doing that by opening the files app, going to that specific folder and then opening those files. Now I can take that specific folder, put it in my dock, and now I have it on both my Mac and here. So there's a lot of common files that I have to use from my Mac when I'm on the move and I do that with the iPad. So that is a huge help. Now, the next thing is the preview app, which I briefly mentioned while I was talking about the files app. And this is also, again, if you have an iPad, you're gonna love this because it's something that is so essential to a Mac. I use a preview app all the time to sign, annotate different PDFs, and it just makes it so easy. And now to finally be able to do that right here in the palm of your hands from anywhere, it's just so clutch. So the fact that Apple actually brought this to the iPad is, is a huge plus. And I know for a fact that people that constantly are relying on documents that need to be annotated or signed or modified in any way, they are going to love this. They're going to really, really enjoy this. So I personally, huge joy. This is really useful for me. The next useful feature for me is background tasks. And that just simply means that if you have a file downloading, it's going to download and you can actually leave the page and let the app do its thing. And you will know when it's done. I can't tell you how many times I've just sat on a page waiting for something to download on the iPad and I've just kind of moved to my phone in the meantime or to my MacBook or something. So that is really useful. And one way that actually helps me is often when I'm filming, like I'm doing right now, I monitor myself with this app that connects to my camera over Wi-Fi. And so I can see a live view of what's happening in my camera because it's far away from me. Now, typically when I'm filming product shots and stuff, I like to use the iPad as just my monitor so I can see whether a shot is coming out the right way. And if I were to put it in the background, then it just disconnects, you know? And now I can resize it, move it around, open a different app and come to it later and it's actually running. And so it's doing that task in the background. This didn't happen before. I don't know if this is particularly related to that, but it is something that is really, really useful. Now, the next feature I wanna discuss is the phone app. And this doesn't make a difference to me simply because I don't want any kind of communication enabled on my iPad. I don't have iMessages turned on currently. I don't want to be notified like, you know how you can have your iPhone ring and then it shows up on your iPad too. I don't do that simply because when I have my iPad open, it's for something purposeful. And whether that's a productivity thing, a game, or just pure entertainment, I don't want to be disturbed. So I don't have those things enabled on it. But if you do want that, then you now have the phone app. You can see your call log and everything. And so I think it could be beneficial for a lot of people, but I just wanted to personally share my insight as to why I don't actually keep any communication enabled on my iPad. Next thing is Apple intelligence, which is still, still cooking. So until it's not fully baked, I don't really want to talk about it all that much. So I personally, uh, I don't really use Image Playground all that much. Genmoji was fun to play around with once or twice, but I haven't used it. So I 
really am not missing anything or I don't really care about it. Once more like important features actually come through, then I will actually use it. And the last thing I want to touch up on is, does this make an iPad your computer? And you know, I, it's kind of like, I think that that inspiration in us comes from watching movies and seeing people just having this handheld computer that can kind of do everything and it's like projecting things and whatnot, right? And that dream is still there, but it's we're, we're not there yet. I have asked so many different people, whether it's friends, friends, kids, you know, coworkers, a lot of people as to how they use their iPad and here's what the response is. For some people, it is their computer. For other people, it can do majority of the things, but a few things they still have to rely on a computer. And for some people, it's purely an entertainment device. I literally know people that just have an iPad Pro because it has the best screen. It's a great entertainment device. And that's fine. That's, I guess, the beauty of this machine, right? Is that it can kind of fit into whatever you want it to do. But in order to find out whether this is actually going to be your computer is something that you're just going to have to experiment for yourself. That's it. It's really as simple as that. And I think this definitely bridges the gap between the Mac and iPad and it brings things closer. But we don't really need Mac OS on an iPad. What we need are Mac OS apps fully optimized for the user interface of an iPad. And that's what I think is really important. Let the iPad be an iPad, but give us those Mac OS apps. Give us a true Logic Pro, a true Final Cut Pro, and many others, right? So I really hope that this video helped kind of shine some light on some features that are important to me, and I hope you found something that you learn new. If you've enjoyed this video, all I ask of you is give it a thumbs up so more people can find it. And like always, comment down below with anything that you want to say. And most importantly, take care of yourself and I will see you in the next video.